Plastics. Did you know that every year in Barbados we import more than 140,000 pounds of plastic straws? That's enough to fill 9 40 foot shipping containers. And did you know that we import 150,000 pounds of plastic cups? That's the weight of 43 Z air vans. And we also import approximately 100 million plastic bags. That's enough plastic bags to wrap around Barbados 368 times. That means we could wrap around Barbados every day of the year and still got some left over. So Rick, we know that we use a lot of plastic, but where does all this plastic go? To explain, let's follow the journey of three discarded plastic bottles and look at their impacts on Barbados and the planet. If you follow the journey of each plastic bottle and at the end, you can decide which is the best of the three. You know that place in St. Thomas? Some people call it the landfill, other people call it Mount Stinkle. But either way, that's where bottle number one ends up, the dump. Or the official name, the mangrove pond landfill, but the dump. Have you seen it? Do you know how big it is? Do you know how much garbage goes into the dump every single day? Well, it's a thousand tons that make it into the landfill every single day. But what's a thousand tons? What does a thousand tons look like? A thousand tons is like parking 570 ZR vans up at the dump every single day or the amount of people it would take to fill the stands at Kensington Oval. In the landfill, more and more waste is dumped on top of what is already there. So what happens when it rains? The water mixes with the toxic materials which are already there, including the plastics which are made from oil and gas. So a toxic stew is created called landfill leachate. Let's pause the story for a minute and remember that Barbados is the 85% limestone rock. So when it rains, the water naturally filters through the limestone rock and into underground aquifers. That's where it's then captured and piped straight into our homes, schools, offices and hotels. So let's jump back to the landfill where the poisonous dew has the potential to trickle through the limestone into our aquifer springs, soils and eventually out to the ocean where it poisons numerous ecosystems along the way. What are your thoughts on bottle number one? No on to bottle number two. Let's get pelt in the bush. Bottle number two is reduced to litter, but why is littering bad? Our roads turn into shallow streams and the gullies turn into active watercourses. And the water picks up any loose debris in its path from plastic bottles to slippers. As the water flows, all this litter moves to lower ground and eventually out to the ocean. So once plastics enter the ocean, species like sea turtles can ingest the plastics mistaken for food. The plastics then fill up the turtle's belly, but there's no nutritional value in the plastics. So eventually, the turtle dies a long and painful death. And the birds are impacted too. Sometimes birds confuse plastics with the colorful foods that they're attracted to in nature. They eat it and eventually die. And it's estimated that 10% of all the plastic that we use ends up in the ocean. But was 10%? The problem with plastic is that it never goes away. The plastic bottle in the landfill will be there for a thousand years. And the same is true in the ocean. The only thing is that it will be broken up into a gazillion little pieces. Why? Because plastic doesn't break down. It just breaks up into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces known as microplastics. But don't think it's just the birds and the turtles that go about it. Ocean plastics affect us too. Let me show you how. The ocean is filled with tiny plankton and they are the building blocks of the ocean food system. The plankton ingests some of the microplastics, mistaking them for food. Then along comes the flying fish who eats the plankton, which is now filled with the plastic. Then along comes the dolphin who eats the flying fish that's filled with the plankton. And guess who eats the dolphin? You do. So as more and more plastics continue to damage the marine ecosystem, there's less fish life and therefore there's less food in the ocean for you. So tell me now. How does the journey of the Peltway plastic bottle sound to you? So now on to the last bottle. It gets put into the recycling bin and is collected by the recycling company. The bottles and plastics are taken to a recycling center where they are crushed and baled. Recycling companies shred the blocks of plastics. They wash it and melt it. Remember how plastic is made through heat and oil? No, we won't need to extract any more oil. We can make something new without extracting any hydrocarbons. This helps us by minimizing the waste going into our landfill and helps the planet by reducing the extraction of oil that produces harmful carbon emissions. With this, the plastic can now be repurposed into a brand new item, such as a bench, a chair, an umbrella, even a kite. 
What we've got to remember is that on small islands, like always, when we discard things, there's no such thing as a waste. We have to take it upon ourselves to manage waste, not only for the health of the landfill, but for our health, the health of our ecosystems, and the health of our children. The more plastics that we're able to recycle and repurpose, the less plastics we need to produce. The less plastics that we need to produce reduces our carbon emissions and reduces our carbon footprint. And even though this is the best outcome for the plastic bottle, the truth is it still has to be crushed, baled, processed and shipped, and some will still end up in the landfills and the gullies and the oceans. The only true solution is to avoid the use of plastics. That's why we have to support the government's new ban on single-use plastics. And remember, refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, regenerate, and then recycle.